Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Alhamdulillah Nahmaduh wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'ahdihi wa nasta'gfiruhu Wa ashadu an la ilaha illallah Wahdahu la sharika lahu Wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa nabihu wa rasuluhu Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Beginning the khutbah al praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and thanking Allah Azza wa Jal for having gathered us together among those who say La ilaha illallah Muhammadan Rasul Allah. We thank Allah Azza wa Jal because Allah has guarded us against disbelief. Guarded us, walhamdulillah, because we have embraced Allah Azza wa Jal has guarded us against the falseness of our speech has protected us, walhamdulillah, from many of the misguidance that you find everywhere, not just in America, but everywhere in the world. That, walhamdulillah, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken us as among those who believe in Him. That, walhamdulillah, Allah will set our affairs aright. We ask Allah's mercy and peace on the Prophet, alayhi salatu was salam. Because we are trying our best to walk in his example. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala might reward us with the best in this life and the best in the hereafter. Ameen. First I have to say, walhamdulillah, I feel so at home uh, with so many wonderful faces in Dar Hijra. Uh, subhanallah, it's, um, maybe when you're, when you're here you take it for granted. How amazing this environment is, walhamdulillah. There are some places in the United States, uh, if, you see, if they see this many people, they think it's Eid. <laughs> Subhanallah. We have thousands gathered every Friday in this house to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It has become an institution, Dar al-Hijrah, an institution not just among Americans, but if you travel around the country or around the world and they say, where are you, where are you from? Where do you live? You say, oh, I live, in, I live in Virginia. I live in the D.C. area. They said, do you know the place of migration, Dar Hijra? They say, subhanAllah, we watch the video and we watch the program of the youth and we're trying, alhamdulillah, to... to uh, learn from their example so that we can apply it as best practices for our community. Walhamdulillah, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to continue to shower blessings and mercy and peace and guidance, protection upon this house of Allah. Amen. Today I want to talk a little bit um, in the theme of, I saw one of the programs here on, uh, by the way, brothers, no talking during the Jumwa. Uh, no, the, the, even the, the salam. Save it for when the imam give the taslim at the end of the salah, then you can taslim all you like. You can hug and kiss, but during the khutbah, inshallah, uh, save uh, your, your communication. And if the person bothers you, just ignore them. And you can explain to them later. Walhamdulillah. Uh, this is uh, a really, I guess, maybe every now and then uh, we should have a review of the, the, the adab of, uh, of uh, Salat al Jumma, but not today. Today I want, in the theme of what I saw, one of the programs about uh, Black History Month. I want to continue, even though February just ended yesterday to share with you something that bi'idnillah I hope you will understand why it is so important to build and establish Islamic institutions. First I have to say for many of you maybe you don't know but Islam was in America in the Americas before there was a United States of America around 1312 with the advent of a man 
from West Africa. His name was Abu Bakr II. His brother was Mansa Musa that made the famous pilgrimage to Mecca. But then Muslims came with Columbus as captains. They were Moors from the Moorish Empire that had just been driven out of Spain in 1492 that, alhamdulillah, to guide the three ships, the Nina and the Pinta, both had captains who were Moors. They were of Muslim descent. I don't know how strong their, their deen was after eight centuries of Islam in Spain, but I know that they were Moorish, probably some relatives in Morocco, Mauritania, somewhere like that. But they guided the two other ships of Columbus to the Americas. So there were Muslims with Columbus. And then after the era of Columbus was the tragedy of the transatlantic slave trade. And it's estimated during that period that maybe one-third of all of the enslaved Africans that came to the Americas were Muslim. And that number is estimated, the total number that left Africa is around 200 million. Many of them died along the way, and we ask Allah to have mercy on them and to accept them into his Jannah. But those that remained experienced something that was a systematic removal of the essentials of human life and dignity. And the reason that I'm mentioning this to you is that if you study the science of Maqasid al-Sharia, you will find that there are three main categories. Uh, Al-Shariati uh, began this work, but the contemporary work that many of us read now is Ibn Ashur in his text on Maqasid al-Sharia. And if you look at this, among the five necessities or durura in Maqasid al-Sharia, you will find that these five were systematically removed from the enslaved African. Hifd al-Hayat, Hifd al-Nasr. Hifd al-Aqal, Hifd al-Mal, and Hifd al-Deen. The guidance in the Maqasid is to preserve these five things. When you look at the process of enslavement in America, the enslaved African was not considered to be human. Therefore, the idea that they could to preserve their, their human life. Hifd al-Hayat, to preserve your life, but the humanity of your life. In the period of enslavement, they said that the enslaved African has no soul. Therefore, if you murder them, it's, it's destruction of property. It's not murder. The humanity was removed from the people who brought Islam to this country. And I know we had the program. They talked about many famous Muslims who came during this period. Uh, Omar ibn Said or in Georgetown. Abdul Rahman ibn uh, Suri was in Maryland. Uh, in Georgetown they had a man named Yuru Mahmud or Yuri of Maryland because Georgetown at that time was part of Maryland. They found his house. The Smithsonian now is turning it into a historical site. But he was a known practicing Muslim during the period of slavery which ended in 1865. They took from the enslaved African the ability to preserve their lineage. So you have a situation where the human beings are property and their children are property of the master. 
So when you look at the tradition, now the second element in the maqasid al-sharia has been removed from the enslaved African Muslim or otherwise. Third, hifd al-aql. Preserve your intellect. They said it's illegal for the enslaved African to learn how to read or write. And there were some among them, like Umar ibn Said, who when they uh, put him in, in jail because he refused to obey certain orders, he wanted to uh, keep his Islamic diet. So they put him in a, in a hole. When they came back to the, uh, this encased area, they found that he had some writing on the walls. And they said, what, what is that? He said, this is my Bible, the Quran, written in Arabic. Now, this is a person who is supposed to be illiterate. But yet, alhamdulillah, he's in the institution of enslavement and he's writing the Quran from his memory. The inability for the enslaved African. Uh, before I leave Hifz al-Aql, I want to remind you, there were, uh, if you were a white American and you could read, and you taught an African to read, uh, they would beat you or put you in jail. People like Frederick Douglass learned how to read in Baltimore as an enslaved person even under the conditions of enslavement. And I say this to you also because for many of us, we, we, take, we take literacy um, very lightly, even though the first words of the Qur'an enjoin upon us to be literate. Alhamdulillah, in the maqasid, the fourth element, hifd al-mal, they made it illegal for an enslaved African to pass wealth from one generation to the next. This means every generation starts out where the previous generation started with nothing. Because when you are property, the idea of you conveying property to someone else is ridiculous. People like Uri of Maryland were exceptional. That because of his excellent character, his slave master allowed him to make money on the weekends and he was able to buy his freedom. He was cheated out of that transaction. He saved the money in a second attempt and bought his freedom. Alhamdulillah. There are examples of many of these and I, I'm encouraging you to look at this because as Muslims in America, this is your history. When someone comes to you and they talk to you about you're a foreigner and you don't belong here, tell them, look, the first Muslims who came here, they removed all five of the durura from them, including hifd al-deen, that it was illegal for us to practice Islam or any religion. They said, why if the person is just uh, a step above an animal, how can he doesn't have a soul? How can he have a religion? And so they removed from us and made it illegal to practice any religion, but especially Islam. If you uh, get involved in this history, you will see some of the writings of captains from slave ships saying, Beware of taking certain tribes because they are Muslim and they're very difficult to, to maintain. You see, one of their assumptions was that because the tribe spoke different languages, uh, that they wouldn't be able to communicate. 
And many of them were warring with each other. And so there was conflict. But then they could hear in the belly of the ship when the people are really in their most difficult moments. You hear them in whatever language is their native tongue, they cry out to Allah, Hasbunallah wa ni'm wakil. Wala hawla wala quwata illa billah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, la ilaha illallah. Walhamdulillah, that legacy of those five durura, I believe sincerely that they used to study Islam. I know that Thomas Jefferson and James Madison, they studied Islam. They have uh, copies of the Quran. Keith Ellison, when he became sworn in as a congressman, he found in the Library of Congress the, the Quran of Thomas Jefferson and he took his symbolic oath of office on that Quran. If they knew about the Quran, they probably, someone, shaitan or something, taught them about these five durura. Because it's not by accident. I believe that all five of them were removed. Alhamdulillah, we pray to Allah the restoration of those elements of the necessities of Maqasid Sharia be returned to us all. That we might establish Islam in our lifetime to restore it among those who lost it and to invite those who have not heard about the message of Islam that they might join us, alhamdulillah, in this wonderful deen. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salam al Surah Kareem. Allahu Akbar. I have some great news. I know maybe you was a little, you know, like Johar, that was a little too heavy for us, man. They took all of the durura from the enslaved African and we're in bad shape. First, I got to tell you, when they talk about slavery, stop calling the people slaves. The only slave that's worth being is Abdullah. Right? One of the two best names, Abdurrahman and Abdullah. I'm an Abdullah. I'm not an Abd. Anybody else? The other people, they are in the state of enslavement. Uh, they're uh, prisoners of war. They're anything. Uh, people in bondage, but stop calling them slaves. Because, walhamdulillah, we want to restore the dignity that Allah placed in us. So that's one. The second is I have fantastic news. Slavery ended in 1865 by the order of the President of the United States after the Civil War, and they wrote the 13th and 14th Amendments to the Constitution. Slavery and involuntary servitude have been abolished except for the punishment of crimes. So there's still some slavery in America, but it's for the punishment of crimes. From 1865 to 1965, something amazing happened in America. By 1865 to 1965, you have the X factor. Malcolm X was assassinated February 21st, 1965. 1965, Islam was the fastest growing religion, organized religion in America. And that continues until today. I'm not throwing shade on nobody's religion. People can do in America what they like, but I want to be clear. With Islamophobia and everything else they throw at us. Yuriduna and Yudfinal Allah be fy him. Everything that they've tried to do to extinguish the light of Allah, it's not working. People are coming to the deen of Islam even though we're not doing the best job of dawah. We're not. But alhamdulillah, we have institutionalized the deen in America. So if somebody wants to find out about Islam... Because you're afraid to tell them, you know, on your job, you're afraid to say, uh, Abdullah, yeah, man, I mean, uh, uh, 
What's your name, Adam? That's a Muslim name, Adam. Your name is Joseph? Oh, that's Yusuf, right? Do you know anything about Islam, John? That's Yahya. He's a prophet in Islam. Let me invite you to come over to the masjid. They have a, a, a program here about uh, uh, tea, a cup of tea or something like that. Why don't you come over to the masjid, right? Many of us, you're still scared to tell your neighbor so your neighbor finds out from somebody else about the beauty of this dean, but because we have an institution, they can go to the website, they can come to programs and activities, well, alhamdulillah, and learn about Islam. And so I'm encouraging you, alhamdulillah, uh, in the memorable words of Tupac, he said, ladies, I know you're fed up, but keep your head up. I know you're fed up. I know you're frustrated. Keep your head up, alhamdulillah, because people are coming to this deen like never before. And don't believe them when they say, oh, they, they're coming into Islam and they're leaving. That means we just can't, we're not following them, but, they, but they're not leaving Islam. They may not come to your masjid, but they, they, I meet them. And so, alhamdulillah, I want to invite you. Keep making dawah. Don't, don't, be, don't be afraid. Now, I might get in trouble right now, what I'm going to say. This has, this is, I'm not credited to the masjid, safe. People who are all different kind of letters, every different kind of group, they are very proud to say what they are, what they believe in. Am I right? Don't answer that. Just, right? People got all different kind of lifestyles. Right? They're all proud of their lifestyle. Then why? We got the best program going. Best program. We had equal rights for women way before the Constitution, the uh, 21st Amendment to the Constitution. Women had rights in Islam. Racism. We've been battling racism. Anytime somebody does some racist, you can go back to the Quran and the Sunnah of Rasulullah and say, bam! Then we ought to be out there. I know we've been on defense since 9-11, you know. We don't, I don't want to say anything about Islam, you know, probably I'll lose my security clearance. Why the other person not afraid? We should be afraid of Allah. When Allah asks us, why were you in America? You had this great message. You had these great programs. You ought to make a commitment to yourself. Every week, I'm going to bring somebody I know to Dara Hijra. Whatever the, right, whatever the right time is. You know what I'm saying? Maybe, there's a, maybe there's, your person not vibing this way, don't take them to that. They'd be offended. Take them to something where they're going to connect with Islam. The first thing they're going to tell you is, the, those were some amazing people, how they were, the men were hugging and kissing each other, the ladies were hugging and kissing each other, and, and the, it was so diverse against the racism that they see other places. You just need to invite them. I'm going to invite you, alhamdulillah, to the 36th 36 annual banquet of Dara Hijra. 36! We didn't get here yesterday. I need you after Salah, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand if you don't have a ticket, to raise your hand and buy a ticket. And don't buy a ticket for yourself. Buy a ticket for yourself and your family and your children because we don't get enough opportunity. There are only two Eids a year. The rest of the time, CNN and Fox News is bombarding you. Come on out and enjoy yourself. It's going to be fun. Your family gets to dress up. You get to eat some good food. You don't have to cook dinner. You get to hear some inspiration. You have some perspiration. And then you make a donation. So alhamdulillah, $65 per ticket. $700 to buy a table. Most of our families... If you're first-generation American, most of you, you have enough family 
with, between you and your brother or sister and aunt, whatever, you could buy a whole table. But let us come together that we might celebrate, alhamdulillah, the beauty of what Allah has allowed us to build in this country, a place for the remembrance of Allah Azza Allahumma dina fi man hadayt, wa afina fi man afayt, wa tawalana fi man tawalayt. Oh Allah, guide us among those whom you have guided. Ya Allah, protect us among those whom you have protected. Ya Allah, join us, walhamdulillah, in the footsteps of your anbiya, Ya Allah. Oh Allah, we pray, walhamdulillah, open our hearts to love for you, Ya Allah, and love for each other. Oh Allah, help us, walhamdulillah, that we might establish the qam of the deen, that we might establish, Ya Allah, your remembrance in this country. Oh Allah, we ask, walhamdulillah, every facility for us. Some of us suffering with difficulties, Ya Allah, with our family and our finances. Ya Allah, open the shower us with your rizqun tayyibun, Ya Allah. Oh Allah, bless us, walhamdulillah, with health. Ya Allah, that we might go out, walhamdulillah, strong, fi sabilillah, to stand for what is right and forbid what is wrong. Oh Allah, we ask for your mercy and your peace on those suffering around the corner or around the world, Ya Allah. Oh Allah, help us to be emissaries of your peace, Ya Allah. Oh Allah, guide us, walhamdulillah, that we might have the best speech and the best character, that we might guide someone, Ya Allah, to the deen of Islam. Oh Allah, preserve us and our families, Ya Allah, from a fire whose fuel is men and stones. Ya Allah, forgive us of our sins, Ya Allah, and grant us into your Jannah ma'abrar. We ask for your mercy and peace, Ya Allah, on the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, and upon his family and his companions, and upon all of the anbiya and those who follow the way of your haqq, Ya Allah, until the day of judgment. Amin.